Technology is like Pandora's box. Once it's open, you can't really close it. There is going to be a downside to this technological progress. Automation is going to further concentrate wealth in the hands of the few who own the robots. We need to think of a new social structure, new you know, purposes for human beings. I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Do you think that we're in a danger zone? De definitely. I think any conversation about artificial general intelligence or like robots taking over is a distraction to the real question that we have to answer, which is what are we going to do about the people whose jobs are displaced? I'm at a Silicon Valley robotics show with Adam Kell, a partner at a venture capital firm that focuses on artificial intelligence and robotics. Techies like Adam are battling it out to own the machines that will replace jobs like lawyers, loan officers, doctors, and truck drivers. The result is likely to be a radical deepening of inequality that could challenge our very ideas about the nature of work. There are bigger questions about what will happen to capitalism um, when scarcity is no longer kind of a factor, because that's what we're talking about. I mean, like when we build the tools that can you know, fully automate the, these processes, then we're not limited by human labor to be able to put stuff together. Millions of people are expected to lose careers in the next decade from various forms of automation. If you think about mobile phones, like they totally changed us as consumers, but they didn't really change the way work was done. Um, this new uh, generation of technology is, is absolutely going to do that. San Francisco, with its tech industry dominance and crushing housing crisis, is a window into the inequality of today. We're tired of standing on these corners. We want Nikes and we want Pampers for our kids, just like everyone else does, but we have not been afforded the opportunity to walk in these tech cathedrals. Del Seymour worked his way out of homelessness and founded a group that trains low-income workers and homeless for tech jobs. They've had success stories, but it's an uphill battle. Well, of course there's frustration and anger on outside. I mean, we're like the little kid in the, in the Dickens uh, uh, novels, a little homeless kid that's standing outside the restaurant looking through the window while people are sitting there carving a steak. That's how we feel every day. Jobs in trucking, fast food, and factories have long been avenues for those without higher education to have a middle-class living or simply to stay afloat. If you had an environment with only automated systems, basically orders would come in from, from the e-commerce side, the robot would go pick the item, put it in the tote, uh, the, the items would then be put into a box and then a label would be automatically pl uh, placed on it. You obviously wouldn't need any people in that environment. Yeah, fine. yeah, yeah. They, they they're don't. just fine. They're, they'll go around you. Yeah. Uh, so they can replan on the fly and make decisions about where to go and what to do. Melanie Wise is CEO of Fetch Robotics, a company that specializes in automated warehouse robots. It's something that a lot of warehouse managers want, where you can turn the lights off in a facility and just have it operating without any people in it. I asked Melanie if she thought her robots could reduce jobs. And one of the biggest like things that the industry is trying to tackle right now is there's not enough people to do the work. Hiring has been on a steady upward trajectory as jobs in warehouses have largely replaced jobs in the brick and mortar retail industry. But that could change as sales of warehouse and logistics robots increase to $22.4 billion by 2021, up from less than $2 billion in 2016. We need to rethink capitalism itself. And we have another five years, seven years before it gets ugly. But in after, after five, in the five to ten year period, we will start to see turmoil and we will have to start thinking about this. It's time to start learning and adapting right now. Economic fears have prompted some to prepare for the possibility of societal collapse. Adam Taggart gave up his job at Yahoo to prepare for drastic changes that he sees as inevitable. Those with the money, and I, I realize this is the 0.001% we're talking about, but are buying retreat properties either here in America or, or internationally. Um, and I think that got people's attention of, all right, these are legit smart people. Um, what do they know that we don't know? Some in the tech world have bought secret getaways, bunkers, and guns to prepare for collapse. They're a minority, though the concerns are widespread. Here's the former chief economist of the Senate Banking Committee. In a number of uh, realms, we are socially and resource and financially unsustainable. And those unsustainabilities tend to climax in some kind of violence unless they're preempted with intelligent policy. 
Policy solutions have been plunging the country deeper into inequality, even as it has become a central political issue. This growing inequality, not just of result, inequality of opportunity, this growing inequality, it's not just morally wrong, it's bad economics. So should tech leaders stop innovating or working towards these advancements? I wanted to ask Silicon Valley's inventors these questions, those creating the labor-saving robots of the future. We automate what we can automate, right? We're, we're gonna keep doing that. That's how we get more productive. We've been doing that for thousands of years. Robots are about 50 years old. The last 15 years have been really an explosion in terms of the technology, and the last three or four years have been an explosion in terms of investment in robotics. Worldwide annual spending on AI is expected to increase from 12 billion in 2017 to nearly 60 billion in 2021. We can sit back and say, we don't want to adopt robots, we want to protect jobs, and that's great. China will basically build everything for us for the foreseeable future. For those involved in building these technologies, it's an all-out battle. Cousins makes a robot butler that is being used for deliveries in workspaces like offices, hospitals, and hotels. My name is Andy Evers. I'm the general manager here at the Aloft Cupertino. Here in Cupertino, California, right next to the Apple campus. On the overnight shift, we have one person staffing the front desk, so it's very convenient for the, uh, the staff to be able to put things into the relay robot and have it delivered to the room. You know, the robots, if we can get them to figure out how to, you know, clean the floors and, and deliver items to rooms and make beds, then that's great. It'll just allow us to offer more service to our guests. Silicon Valley is a testing ground for technologies that have changed our lives and a window into unintended downsides. It's also where some of the fiercest political debates are beginning over our automated future. It's um, one of the biggest issues that's facing um, this country over the next decade, and not enough people are talking about it. That's Jane Kim, a San Francisco city supervisor running for mayor who has proposed a robot tax to help correct the inequality that is now a defining characteristic of the Bay Area. San Francisco has the fastest growing income gap between the rich and the poor of any city in the country. The income gap comparing annual pay between the wealthiest and poorest 20% grew in San Francisco by more than $70,000 in five years. That has made San Francisco into a city with glittering tech towers, fancy cars, and multi-million dollar homes on every street. I want to say that I do think automation is a good thing. It's a positive thing. Um, it's going to increase our productivity. It's going to grow our economy. It's going to you know, help save lives and maybe even fight climate change. Um, but there is going to be a downside um, to this technological progress. Automation is going to further concentrate wealth in the hands of the few who own the robots. Tech companies employ relatively few people when compared to the corporate behemoths of the past. At its height, Kodak was worth $28 billion and employed 140,000 people. When Instagram was sold to Facebook for $1 billion, there were just 13 employees. Blockbuster Video employed 60,000 people at its peak in 2004, on revenue of $5.9 billion, while Netflix employs just 4,400 people on revenue of $2.5 billion. Much of this innovation has been subsidized for decades um, by taxpayer dollars. And so we are where we at because we have all contributed um, to the research and development of automation. Kim's robot tax has been fiercely opposed by many in the tech world. Yeah, let's tax innovation. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, what's your take on it? I, I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't stop innovation because you're afraid that rich people will get richer. What you should do is figure out how you can make all of us wealthier and then talk about redistribution in ways that make sense. If you don't put some ideas out there, even if they're ones that people hate or have strong reactions to, then you're not gonna be able to push a dialogue and get people to move um, on a really important issue. In San Francisco, the situation is dire. A family of four here making under 105,000 per year is now considered low income by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The housing crisis in the area is so severe that many have simply left or fallen into homelessness. Arnell Clark grew up in East Palo Alto, the heart of Silicon Valley, surrounded by the headquarters of Apple, Facebook, and Google. I always thought that um, East Palo Alto could use some more companies, you know, as prestigious as Facebook is, you know. 
but I hate what them coming to the community has done to it. Arnell couldn't afford to rent a home in the area, so he moved his family into an RV. A lot of the people who live in motorhomes are taxpayers. You know, they work every day. They have families that they're trying to raise. The RVs have become an option of last resort for working poor as rents in the area have skyrocketed. I'm just grateful that uh, my children, uh, they love us and love what we are, uh, love what we bring to them. You know, so. As inequality has worsened nationwide, and automation has spurned fears of social collapse. Some tech titans have suggested a social safety net of free money known as universal basic income. Our robot tax proposal is just one of many tools that we're considering in a portfolio of policies to address automation. And I'm certainly looking at universal basic income as well. The idea is simple. Give every citizen guaranteed income with no strings attached. People might say, oh, we don't want to give handouts. But giving handouts, there's nothing shameful about giving handouts or receiving them in a situation where you have vast amounts of new wealth creation. But it's not an idea that comes without controversy. It gives no incentive to work. It gives all the kind of reasons why you don't work. That would be a tragedy. That would be, that would be, that, 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 oh my God, no, no, no. Now when you look at automation, it makes the product better. It makes the efficiency of the, of the factory better. Uh, it makes for a faster delivery of, uh, of the product, but you still have to have a very advanced staff to maintain those robots. Still, some of the biggest names in the tech crowd are supporting the idea of universal basic income. I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. And now it's time for our generation to define a new social contract. The question now is, will we prepare for the change that seems sure to be headed our way? The experts, academics, tech leaders are all sounding the same alarm bell, which is that automation is going to destroy certain jobs and tasks. And I think it's incredibly important that those that are reaping the benefits of this technological progress contribute their share to address the downsides as well. Hey, I'm Joel with AJ+. Plus. Make sure to subscribe for more docs just like this. Thanks for watching part three. I hope you'll watch part one and two as well.